It's an important question for us to have as people who like Buddhism and people who like psychology, because what happens is if you go to a Buddhist center where it's only Buddhists, you know, and they identify primarily as Buddhists and might have another job or something, regular job, but they're like hardcore Buddhists, is that you'll find a great percentage of people came to Buddhism because they had trauma, you know, or because they had drug and alcohol problems, or because they had some really big existential crisis in their life that made them leave the religion of their birth, you know, because it's not a Buddhist country, these Western countries. So if you're Buddhist, you chose it, you weren't born into it. And why do you leave something? Usually something's wrong. Yeah, or it's not a good fit. So you find all of these traumatized people who are working on Buddhism for many years and becoming very proficient in certain kinds of qualities, maybe patience, maybe kindness, maybe meditation abilities, but you also feel like there might be some gap where they haven't dealt with some of their trauma in a very basic way, <clears throat> maybe a physiological way or a neurological way, and they still have trauma responses and they still have reactivity in places where you can feel there's a wound there or a grief there that Buddhism is helping, but it was almost like too advanced for the pain that they were in. And so I often feel like some therapy would be useful, you know, for folks. And I, I don't see them as contradictory so much as a gradation, like I almost feel like everyone, regardless of trauma, should have therapy, like through all of their 20s, <laughs> you know, maybe into their 30s. Agreed. And then, right? <laughs> 100%, like, people, they should right? get free therapy. <laughs> exactly. And just like, look at your stuff. <laughs> Look at your family of origin issues, look at your <laughs> mental stuff, like look at it all and be held in this way that says, let's help make you whole, let's help you find yourself, let's help you get grounded. And then once you are whole and grounded and yourself, you're strong enough to go into Buddhism where you are seeing that whole is only in reference to parts and self is only in reference to others. And this dualistic way of thinking is an illusion, but it's like going straight to that without doing the kind of preliminary work of just getting settled with yourself means you're a little unstable. So I, I often feel like psychology and Buddhism can work together as two modes and I, and I realize that it sounds, you know, obviously like I have a preference for Buddhism because I see it as superior to psychology and psychology is first and Buddhism is second, you know, or lower and higher. But it's not really in terms of a value judgment because without the lower, you can't do the higher. So they're both essential in some ways, especially because our society is not as communally supportive as maybe it was in ancient times. We're so much more isolated than we used to be. Therapy might not have been needed if the community supported people through hard times differently. And if families were built differently and more expansive and more transparent and different kinds of abuse were maybe less common. And maybe that's just a fantasy and it's always been as bad as it is now. But it feels like nowadays, hiring a professional to hold your stuff and to hear it with kindness and non-judgmentalness is efficient. It's an efficient way to do it. And that sometimes you need medication to get you out of a hole of depression or to get you out of an unsettled place of anxiety. And then hopefully you become stable enough to wean yourself off of it or maybe your brain is just wired in such a way that it has a deficiency and you need it forever a little bit. You know, there's no contradiction there from a Buddhist perspective. You know, if you had diabetes, we wouldn't say you're not allowed to have insulin, you know? So it's, it's, it's kind of that relationship I see. So the contradiction is how we view the self, but instead of seeing it as a contradiction, to see it as there's a lower way of viewing the self that's essential, and then you come to the place of realizing there's no inherently existent self after, you know, like sequentially rather than contradictory. 
And when you start trying to live an ethical life, a spiritual life, and you increase your self-awareness and you really are looking at what you say to yourself and you're looking at what you say to others, if you don't have some context for the self being not inherently existent, then what you see sometimes makes you feel worse. Like, oh, I'm way worse than I even thought because now I'm noticing all of the things I say and do to myself. And then you make the identity even more concrete and you over-identify and you become depressed or defensive or all sorts of problematic things happen. So it's like if you lived only with therapy forever and never kind of upgraded to a spiritual tradition that emphasized altruism, you could get stuck. You know, this group that I work with, they have a a unique form of psychoanalysis that they practice called self-psychology. And basically their main teacher is Heinz Cote. And his framework for what is mental health very much reflects that as soon as you're healthy, really healthy mentally, you naturally become more altruistic and have more empathy, that that's a sign of good mental health. And so because that's the framework that they operate with, their form of psychology works very well with Buddhism. Because we would agree, you know, like people that are very narcissistic and selfish and unkind and angry, it's because they're suffering and it's because they have ignorance. So if we can help remove their suffering and their ignorance, eventually they're going to meet that empathy quality within themselves and then use it for good and continue it to real compassion and real what we would call bodhicitta. So it's a it's a it's a good framework. Um, the way they discuss the self isn't the same as Buddhism, but it's similar enough that it works. So this brand of psychology, there's a lot of um, points of similarity that work.